So Nintendo had a shareholders meeting. They do this every three months to go over the latest financial reports from the previous quarter. We have the first fiscal results in for the current fiscal year, 1920, which ends in March or at the end of March of 2020. Uh, So yes, technically Animal Crossing will be part of this fiscal year. But here's the deal. Uh, We're not just going to go over the sales data. I actually want to have a deeper conversation because I've seen this brought up a lot every single time one of these uh, sales uh, videos comes out, and that is why the heck are Nintendo's games still listed at $59.99 so many years after launch, like Breath of the Wild, 1-2-Switch, etc. Uh, why doesn't Nintendo do what the rest of the industry does and lower their sales, including PlayStation and Sony? Now, um, I'm obviously going to be taking the stance here that I think Nintendo is very smart business-wise, and that they should keep their games priced to where they are, as long as the sales are there. And I also think that there is a trade-off for what Nintendo is doing, and it actually is a good thing for the video game industry. Now, you're going to scoff at me, because obviously, what wouldn't lowering prices of games be pro-consumer? But uh, let's just get into some numbers, because the numbers, I think, are very telling. Uh, So... Yeah, they have all this uh, various other, you know, the revenue and the profits and all that. We're not really interested in that data. Uh, That's for Nintendo as a company to worry about more. Uh, But it is interesting looking at things uh, like hardware units. You know, this past quarter, they sold 2.13 million uh, units for a grand total so far of basically 37 million Switches uh, out in the wild. Uh, By the way, PlayStation and Sony actually had their financial briefing as well, and they are now north of 100 million PlayStation 4s officially. So just to put this in perspective, because we are going to do some comparisons to Sony. Again, this isn't about fan wars. This isn't to put Sony down, but they're going to be part of this conversation because they're the only other company that has, I feel, enough exclusive games to actually have this conversation about. All right. Obviously, 3DS hardware, 75 million. You know, barely sold 200,000 units the past quarter. Not a surprise. 3DS is essentially dead. Uh, Software-wise, we saw 22.62 million units for 210 million total. There's actually over a billion pieces of software moved on PlayStation 4 so far. Not surprising, but on the market a lot longer. Uh, 1.48 million uh, 3DS software was still sold. So they, you know, that's approaching up on 400 million or so there. Uh, so cool, right? Everything's looking all hunky-dory there. Uh, get down to game sales. This is where things get really interesting. This is Nintendo's top 10. Uh, it's the only thing they really report. Although they did tell us that Mario Maker 2 for launch sold about 2.5 million units. It's not in the top 10 yet. Probably will be next quarter. Uh, but it was only out for like a day. Like literally like one day of data. So uh, there you go. All right. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is at 17.89 million. Pretty much 18 million units. All right. Super Mario Odyssey is at 14.94. So pretty much 15 million units. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is at 14.73, which is very, very close to also being at 15 million units. Uh, Breath of the Wild is at you know 13.61, so starting to get more to 13.5, more so than 14 million. But if you combine in Wii U sales, it's actually at 15 million itself. Uh, man, that's that's almost twice as much as the next best-selling Zelda games. So that's crazy. Um, yeah, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee, um, basically at 11 million units. Uh, you have Splatoon, which has now crossed 9 million units units uh i don't know if it's gonna quite get to 10 especially now that they're done with all the splat fest but uh i mean it has a shot it has a shot if splatoon 3 is not coming for a while it has a chance uh with long tail sales to potentially especially if nintendo keeps supporting it at tournaments uh to get the 10 million super mario parties at 6.99 aka 7 million uh, Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe is at 4.1 million. One Two Switch is at still in the top 10 at 3 million. Uh, and then you get Mario Tennis Aces at 2.75, which I think uh, is going to be passed by uh, Super Mario Maker uh, the next turnaround. If it's not going to be passed by Fire Emblem or other games too. So it'll be interesting. We could see some changes at the bottom part of this top 10. I think these top from Splatoon 2 and up, maybe even Mario Party and up, they're pretty safe for a little while. Now, New Pokemon games are probably going to have something to say with that. But here's what's interesting. Look at the sales for this quarter. 1.2 million copies of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold this past fiscal quarter. Remember, there's only about 2 million console sales. 1.2 million Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold. You know what that means? 
Why the hell would Nintendo reduce the price from $59.99? This is a Wii U port. Why the hell would they reduce? Why would they voluntarily give up money? That's my question. Why would they voluntarily give up money? Well, because it could sell better if it was cheaper. Sure. But they also theoretically, because of the cost of cartridges, on the physical version, could end up losing more money than they make. So if they might actually be making more money. And in keeping the game at that price, it also helps maintain this, the, the second market value for it. So if you ever want to resell the game someday, there's actually going to be a higher market for it than there is for other games that sink prices in a month. Some some even do it in, within weeks of release. It's crazy. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey sold 500,000 units. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate sold 920,000 units this past fiscal. Uh, la- this is just the last three months. Uh, Breath of the Wild launch game, folks. A launch Switch game. 840,000 units. What? what? Let's go Pikachu. Let's go Eevee. You know, 350,000. Splatoon 2, 30, 320,000. Super Mario Party, 590,000. More than Odyssey. It's outsold Odyssey this past quarter. Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, 790,000. 40,000 units of 1 2 Switch sold for crying out loud. Another launch game. Then we had 110,000 units of Mario Tennis Aces. If you ever wonder why Nintendo doesn't reduce prices, look at this. Look at this list. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 2017. Odyssey, 2017. Breath of the Wild, 2017. Uh, Splatoon 2, 2017. 1 2 Switch, 2017. Heck, look at, heck, let's, just look at tw- let's just look at the rest. You got Mario Tennis Aces, 2018. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, that came out this year. Uh, Super Mario Party, last year. Let's go Peach, let's go Eevee, last year. Smash Bros, last year. And there's Keep Selling, all this. I mean, look at that software. This is insane. Why would Nintendo ever reduce the price of their games when they keep selling like this? Like, it's dumb. It, it, it would be a stupid business decision. But I think it's a good thing because, you know, as consumers, we talk about, oh, how we want to get games cheaper. And if you're honest with yourselves, you can go on Amazon right now. You can find Breath of the Wild for 45 bucks brand new. So even though MSRP is still $59.99, you can get a lot of these games cheaper now, especially the ones that have been out for a while. Well, that's not here to know there. Nintendo's official MSRP is still $59.99. And you could talk all day long about how they should reduce prices and make it cheaper for consumers, but I want to show you something. Because Sony has a lot of exclusive games. It's among all their best-selling games, and they also reduce prices. Now, remember, Sony has 100 million PlayStation 4s on the market, and it's been on the market a lot longer. Here are the best-selling PlayStation 4 games. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, 15 million units. Again, very good. Not as good as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, right around Mario Odyssey and Smash Bros. level. However, this is on a system that sold 100 million units. So that lets you know that sales for Uncharted 4 have probably dipped off significantly. I don't think there's a long tail of sales here with Uncharted 4 Thief's End. Do you? I mean, 100 million PlayStation 4s versus, you know, 37 million Switches. And it's basically hasn't even outsold Mario Kart. It's selling the same as Odyssey. Yeah, I don't think the long tail of sales is quite there for Sony. 10 million for God of War. Fantastic. Came out early last year. You know, didn't, didn't do better than uh, Let's Go Peach or Let's Go Eevee. That's been out even longer. I know. Okay, it's Pokemon. Fine. So it's doing like Splatoon kind of numbers. Not really seeing a long tail of sales there. Again, on a, on a, on a platform that has sold 100 million units. Horizon Zero Dawn sold 10 million. Again, Platform that sold 100 million units. Last of Us Remastered, a PlayStation 3 port. That's probably even more comparable to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or something. 10 million units. Marvel Spider-Man, 9 million. Now, that's actually, to me, pretty solid. I don't know what the long tail of sales is on that. Uh, but there you go, 9 million. Gran Turismo Sport, 8 million. The Witcher 3, 4.8, etc. Then you start getting into some third-party games and all that jazz. And what you see is that Sony... All of these games from Sony are very, very cheap right now. Let's just look up God of War on PlayStation 4, right? God of War PS4. Let's just see what it's running running for right now. Let's go to the official PlayStation store, because this is where you're going to get the MSRP, so we're not getting like discounts from retailers. Uh, hit buy now. Let's see what this game's running. We're not getting the Stonemason Edition, uh, or the Digital Deluxe, or the Collectors. Let's just go Standard Edition. Let's buy Digital. See what, see what they're going to charge me. $39.99. So $20 cheaper today than it was at launch. All right. Now, you'll see them do this because the sales of the game have slowed down. 
That is the logic behind price reduction, is it not? That the games are no longer able to sell at that $59.99 price at a level of profitability that's acceptable to consumers. Now, one thing you'll notice, and I'm not going to accuse Sony of this, this is definitely more of a third-party thing, is that there is this infinite race to the bottom, right? The goal is to release your product. Like right now, Madden 2020, it, it just came out, and it's releasing at like three different times depending on which version you bought. Thanks, EA. Um, anyways, it's releasing at, at, at all these different times, and it costs $59.99 or more if you get the special editions of deluxe editions and all that jazz. Okay, fine. So you pay that price. Madden, a month from now, is only going to be 40 bucks. A month after that, might only be 20 But you know what they have done to games instead of maintaining the price points? All this race to the bottom stuff? You know what's happened? They know it's a race to the bottom. What does the race to the bottom mean? The race to the bottom means who can lower their price the fastest to reach a pinnacle point in sales that is therefore made up by the number of people participating in microtransactions. Folks, the reason that games don't hold their value at $59.99 for most companies is because of microtransactions and loot boxes. They have replaced the $59.99 launch price point with, look, let's get this in as many hands as possible so we can get as many people buying microtransactions and loot boxes as possible. Now, again, this isn't me accusing Sony. I think Sony does it the more traditional route where it's a... Uh, Look, the game's not selling that well. Everyone bought it at launch. Now no one's buying it two months later. Let's reduce the price. I think that's Sony's methodology. That is what it used to be. Before microtransaction loot boxes were in everything, we accepted that companies would lower prices of games over time, even if it was six months to a year out, once people kind of stopped buying it. But that's not really what's happening with games like Madden and all this stuff. They'll still be top-selling games, but they'll keep reducing the price to get more and more people in to participate in Madden Ultimate Team and microtransactions and loot boxes and all this stuff. This is a tactic that all these companies are using. That race to the bottom is how close can we get to free-to-play where everyone's going to buy money and spend a little bit of money on this and then participate in all the microtransactions that is the race to the bottom ideally you have something like fortnite and apex legends which is free to play which ensures essential essentially that's going to be popular as long as it's a good game and it's full of microtransactions and loot boxes now nintendo doesn't care about the race to the bottom there are very few first party triple a franchises coming out of nintendo on switch that participate in microtransactions and loot boxes in fact i don't even know if any of them participate in the loot box category and microtransactions are a little hit or miss you can buy individual characters uh, from the dlc pack in smash or just buy the entire smash pack you can consider that a microtransaction if you want but uh, you know if that's like the only example you can come up with then that's not much right nintendo is maintaining the price points of their games because the games themselves are holding that value the price of a video game should be determined by the market, right? So market demand and pricing is all about capitalism. People are willing to buy things at a certain price. And if they maintain that price, it's because people are still willing to buy it. Breath of the Wild sold almost a million copies over the last three months. One million copies over the last three months. You know how many companies wish their game could sell one million copies, period? And Breath of the Wild did that over the last three months. 1.2 million copies of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a port from like five, six years ago, sold. 1.2 millions over the last three months. So you wonder why Nintendo doesn't reduce prices. The attach rate of Nintendo's games to their install base is insane. Insane. Basically, every other person that owns a Switch owns Mario Kart. Did you realize this? Every other person who owns a Switch owns Breath of the Wild. Every other person who owns a Switch owns Mario Odyssey. Own Smash Bros. Like, it's crazy the insane attach rate Nintendo gets. And you wonder why they don't reduce their prices. Now, yes, it would be nice as a Nintendo fan to see prices reduced. It would make things easier on my pocketbook. But it also means that the games are devaluing for some reason. And my, my question to you is, and I always bring this up when people talk about pricing, is Breath of the Wild, $59.99 at launch. Is it any less of a game today than it is then? Or was then, I should say. Is Breath of the Wild a worse game today than it was back when it launched? The answer is no. It's actually better. It's had performance updates and free content additions. And obviously now the DLC is out. That's an additional purchase. But no, it's not. Uh, so why should the game be worth less money? That's always been like my, 
my grander point is like, why are these games worth less money? Like, are they suddenly not as good as they once were just because they're not new? I mean, the Switch still sells for 300 bucks. Is it not worth 300 today like it was at launch? Obviously it is because people keep buying it. I Prices come down. Nintendo Selects exist once it reaches a point that no one's buying the games anymore. But people are buying these games in the hundreds of thousands every single quarter. So why would Nintendo reduce the pricing? Why would they participate in a race to the bottom of the barrel to get all their prices comparable to all these other games that deserve attention? As an example, someone brought this up, I think, on a thread on Reset Era, which is right here, mm. um, where somebody was like, hey, look, you know, if Breath of the Wild reduced this price to 30 bucks, would suddenly Cadence of Hyrule, when it comes out, Look as appetizing at its price point in comparison to Breath of the Wild that's now only like five ten dollars more expensive. The answer is no. Obviously, if you have someone who just bought a Switch and they go to the shop and they look up Zelda and they see Cadence of Hyrule and they see Breath of the Wild right next to each other price point wise, they're going to jump with Breath of the Wild and they're not even going to bother with Cadence of Hyrule. So by keeping the games at that premium price, it actually helps highlight some of the lower priced games that deserve to be lower priced and should be lower priced and kind of signal boost them. Nintendo is able to keep their games separated from those smaller games by keeping those price points high. So not only is it better for the indie developers out there and all that jazz, it's better for Nintendo's bottom line it's better for consumers it's better for everyone the only thing the only argument out there that i that i can kind of see is that because everybody else does it it feels weird that nintendo does not microsoft reduces prices of their game sony does it as the sales trail off but here's the thing sony for, for all the people that want to add that nintendo does this out of greed by the way nintendo's a for-profit business of course they do it out of greed or some some form of greed they want to make the most amount of money possible okay do you think Sony reduces the prices on their games out of the goodness of their heart? Is that like an argument people believe? Do people believe that, that God of War on PlayStation 4 is uh, $39.99 out of the goodness of Sony's heart to save you a few bucks? <laughs> no! It's because nobody was buying it anymore at $59.99. They lowered it to a price point that met market demand. Nintendo doesn't need to lower the price of their games because the market demand is still there. Even 1-2 Switch... You know, a game that most of you guys would laugh off and say is dumb sold 40,000 units at $60 a pop over the last three months. Why would they reduce the price to, to, uh, from, of that game? What, so they can reduce it to 20 bucks and maybe get more people to buy it? Oh, what if sales go from 40000 to 60000 Is that 60000 going to make up from the $40 profit loss per version on, you know, 40,000 units? No, do the math. No, it doesn't make up for it. And this is not even including the fact that because a lot of people buy things physically, you end up with a cart that takes up a huge chunk of the cost of that game. So at 20 bucks, the profit margin is dinky. Guys, Nintendo knows what they're doing. I know it's frustrating. I know it's everyone else is doing something, so Nintendo should do it too. I, but sometimes it's good. If Nintendo participated in the race to the bottom... Because there are companies that reduce the price of their games and the sales haven't even trailed off. It's just preemptive. You know, NBA 2K, mad. Sales aren't going to trail off as we get closer to the NFL season. They're going to keep increasing, but the price of the game will come down because they want people, to, more people to get in to do microtransactions and loot boxes. They care more about getting people playing the game than they do about that initial price in. They just want to use and abuse people at launch and then cut the price and then, you know, gouge you later with, with in-game stuff. That's what these companies want to do. I don't want Nintendo to get to that point where they're doing that. They don't reduce the prices like Sony because their games are selling better over time than Sony's do. If Sony was seeing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sales for, say, oh, I don't know, Uncharted 4, like if they sold 1.2 million in the last quarter, by the way, Uncharted 4 Thieves and only sold like 10,000 units over the last three months, so it already doesn't have the same tail of sales. But hey, you know, what do I know? You know, I'm just a guy looking at the data. Folks, the $60 price point is good. Uh, and I'll, and I'll say this as someone who's been gaming for a long time and people who think $60, $60 is a lot of money. And I, I understand, uh, it's expensive compared to phone games and, and free to play and all that indie titles, etc. cetera. There, there, there's some great games you can get that are, that are much cheaper. My thing is, dude, I was paying 60 bucks back in the late nineties for games. 60 bucks back then could have got me like four tanks of gas or something like that. It was crazy. Now I can get like one and maybe a quarter tank of gas out of 60 bucks. 
video game pricing hasn't really moved. They've they've instead the industry has kind of gone towards a look. We're not going to change the prices of video games. In fact, we're going to try to make video games feel cheaper, but it's really more expensive on the back end with the microtransactions and loot boxes. You get a worse game because of it. I would much rather Nintendo keep their prices where they're at, keep having these long tail of sales from people like me and you and all the other Nintendo fans out there and not practice this stuff in their games because that's what's going to happen. Nintendo's not going to cut the price out of the goodness of their heart. Sony doesn't do it. Nobody does that. But they will cut the price if the end result is more people doing microtransactions and loot boxes. If Nintendo ever realized the billions of dollars they left on the table with Mario Odyssey by not making all of those uh, costumes in the game, microtransactions and loot boxes. I mean, if they had done that with those costumes of Mario Odyssey, you realize Nintendo could have made multiple billions of dollars extra off of Mario Odyssey, but they didn't. They kept it at, at $59.99, kept it at that premium price, sold 15 million copies of the game at $60. Like, think about that. You see these sales for PlayStation 4 games, and it's like, oh, it's sold 15 million how many of those 15 million were sold at 59.99 for maximum profitability how many eight nine well when you look at nintendo's chart you can confidently say every single one of them anyways uh, you guys let me know what you think of this down in the comments below i know it's kind of a controversial opinion it's not it's kind of pro-business but I think it's kind of pro-consumer, too. I think we are getting artificial benefits of Nintendo keeping the prices at this. And that is that we don't have to deal with the rest of the industry bullshit. Let's just call it what it is. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Rovajans from Nintendo Prime. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. Uh, I will know that there probably isn't going to be a Prime News episode today. There is a lot of news out there. But uh, I've just got... A lot on my plate and a lot of things to take care of. Uh, you can follow NintendoPrime.net. I'll put a bunch of the news up there as well. There will be at least one more video coming today. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah.